Welcome, this is Zangler, the Tesla Semi Advocate, and today's video is called Factory Mystery? Question mark. And um, actually, I think we what it really does is it answers a mystery. And uh, stay tuned, and about three quarters of the way through this video, we will um, address the mystery and um, see the evidence that solves the mystery. And in the meantime, it's a beautiful um, afternoon in northern Nevada at the uh, Tesla Nevada Gigafactory GF1 in the background, busy producing um, 2170s in conjunction with Panasonic and also producing drive motors for shipment to Fremont and Powerwalls. Powerwall 3s, by the way, which I recently had installed. Um, I was one of the ones that tests were identified as having potentially defective Powerwall 2s. So Tesla Energy replaced my Powerwall 2s with Powerwall 3s, and I'm very, very happy. Although, as usual, Tesla service is um, has a hard time keeping up with demand. It took like three months for them to come out, and in the meantime, they shut down my Powerwalls for safety. Anyways, we are now looking at the uh, megacharger uh, location. There's going to be 12 megachargers for the Tesla semis to use when they uh, to charge up when they come off of the uh, line, end of line, and those I believe are not are cabinets that will um, pr that provide the power, the uh, large amounts of po power to the one megawatt chargers. So 12 of them. Um, charging simultaneously, I don't think they can all, I think that uh, one cabinet feeds four mega chargers. At least that's the V3 arrangement. And um, anyways, point being is they'll be charging, they'll be, they'll be uh, drawing a lot of power from the, from the grid, which is Nevada happens to be the lowest priced price of electricity in the uh, in the United States at about 10 cents per kilowatt for residential probably much cheaper and a lot of it a lot of it is um, renewable okay here we go here is what I saw someone describe this as a, a Lego set but um, when I posted the teaser picture but the best one I like is the monopoly apartments and, and housing uh, blocks that are used in the game of Monopoly from a distance. That's what it, that certainly looks like. A massive amount of Tesla, I mean, of uh, semi um, production line equipment. Your guess is as good as mine about exactly what this is, but um, I believe they've started to bring some in with the forklifts, as you can see in the picture. And they have large telehandlers with forklift attachments that could be used to bring in those large blue uh, rectangular um, pieces of equipment. None of this looks like actual robots. It looks more like um, other things related to a uh, production line. I guess robots could be in those largest, larger crates, but from my recollection of watching, my recollection of watching the Giga Texas is the, the assembly robots came, uh, looked a little different on delivery, and they were pretty obviously robots. Um, <clears throat> now we're heading our, heading our way over to the Section G, the stamping section, according to um, my f my sources, meaning Grok, this is, sorry about that. I asked Grok what company is most likely to be supplying Tesla with stamping equipment, specifically stamping presses large enough to stamp out frames. And um, it mentioned several companies, including Ada, 
AIBA, which produces, which we've seen in the uh, in the uh, Tesla factories before, but it said, quote, Tesla has a well-documented history of using high tonnage stamping presses from Schuler Group in its manufacturing facilities. So it believes that the um, those colossal stamping presses that were delivered from um, Texas, and based on our uh, channel checks, we uh, in our most recent videos, it seems like the far right stamping press area still remains, they're still, it's still empty, and a stamping press remains to be delivered. And this gantry crane from Griffin being um, still on site further supports that. I hope to um, catch them delivering that final stamping press. And um, my speculation all along has been that the left side of this building will be used for a series of stamping presses for the sheet metal. Um, the Tesla Semi body and doors are sheet metal and always have been. And I believe that the um, series of stamping press on this end of the building are for sheet metal. And the one on the far right end of the building, I apologize for that. I will now turn sound notification off. Um, so you won't hear a, a ding again. Anyways, um, I believe the far right stamping press is going to be used for stamping frames. And um, they are, uh, as I have provided a picture from the uh, Pepsi event where Tesla had a display of the frame and it's a, just a classic C-frame, um, heavy duty steel frame <clears throat> bolted together with cross sections bolted together that provide the foundation for the main cases and the battery and the, and the um, body to be um, attached to. This is the BFD, the big freaking door, and uh, can't see much, but what we can see is workers with reflective um, vests on, and uh, that's about it. Some sort of white framing there, but uh, I believe that has just been brought in, and um, maybe part of the conveyor system that will bring the uh, stamped sheet metal to the rest of the factory. I do kind of speculate based on new information how this line might flow. Massive speculation, um, but you know, it's fun to speculate. This is the self propelled um, transport vehicle that um, has been parked there for a while, but that's not to say that it isn't being used. But um, it'll probably be used to um, deliver, to, uh, to move the final stamping press. Um, into the building. Although from where it is and from there, from where there is a door on the other end, on the um, southeast end of the building where that stamping press is yet to be delivered, there is a door there. So we might see him back in. And if you want to see a fun video, um, look back a few videos on where the, um, the giant double diesel push-pull rig after the after the push rig is um, disconnected, they back in a stamping press into that door right there on the right, uh, very carefully, as opposed to using the transport vehicle and the gantry crane. The gantry crane was set up inside, as opposed to outside, which which had me perplexed for a little while. Anyways, now we're going along the western edge of the building just to take a look. One of the things we're going to focus in on is um, the, um, the paint shop vents from Jayco that we have watched and saw that were delivered. And they have many, many of them up to, I think about 20 of them because they're numbered, have been installed. And we'll spend a, uh, a good deal of time focusing in on that. And based on the uh, stamping, based on the paint line that follows the vents, we'll do. That's what that's what leads me to do some speculation on how the um, assembly line might flow. 
<clears throat> I would love if Dan Priestley or somebody would share. Many people have asked if they're going to use the box construction, uh, the box assembly technique, or a classic assembly line. And for the Tesla Semi, I don't know. I, my my speculation is it won't be the box technique because um, basically a linear flow lends itself pretty easily to this um, to this construction of the semi. Although, who knows? The other thing is, I would do not believe that any giga press, any giga presses are involved um, from Idra. I don't think there's an application for it. The frame, you know, the the in in the other vehicles, it serves as a uh, connection uh, as a um, subframe. And I believe that the Tesla Semi has to use the classic C-frame, heavy-duty steel um, technique. Okay, we're coming up to the mystery solved. So look at this. They finally brought gravel in to this structure <clears throat> that some people thought, I think most of us had settled on it was an, it was an escape ramp for the um, Semi uh, test track. But a few people thought it might just be for displaying um, a semi, you know, for um, for display purposes, which makes which made very little sense because from the road down below you can't see up here, you can see the flag, but you can't see this spot. So, anyways, looks like they're bringing in gravel, and the mystery is solved. This is going to be an escape ramp. Every Tesla semi that comes off the line will probably run down this. Um, this uh, test track, and in the uh, in a in the event of a brake failure, even though there and regen failure, uh, we wouldn't want it to see go off the edge of that um, edge of that berm, so they can drive it into the um, escape ramp. That's the mystery that is now solved. I expect them to bring in more gravel and not leave it the way it was current positioned. All right, here we go. We're gonna. Look at all this Jayco um, paint shop of the future, high efficiency, low, um, low uh, um, emissions paint shop equipment, and these are the vents. And they're, I see now they're numbered up to 21. Guy wires to hold them down, incredibly high winds, occasionally um, visit northern Nevada. I would say 40 miles per hour winds is not uncommon at all and occasionally gusts beyond that. So these guys, all of these uh, paint shop vents are um, braced accordingly. Another interesting thing is to see when they, um, when they're going to actually put the semi or iWest, depending on your orientation, uh, branding on the top of the building like they show in the rendering those black little uh, SOS looking things um, are uh, actually mark paths I think where you're supposed to walk around the building um, although some of those vents are right in front of them anyway when we turn around and come back we'll talk about how this could flow. We know, one of the few things we know is that the stamping press is section G, right there. By the way, there are two of these subframes, uh, these frame uh, structures, and um, yet to see what might be going on top of them. Those are the seams between the buildings, and each of these buildings is sort of a standalone building connected by the just connected with by those uh those seams and they have to have little ladders to be able to go up and over them and you can see what i mean that's where you're supposed to walk and if you follow that you get to a ladder to go to the next section a bridge to get to the next section okay so bear with me and uh let me know what you guys think this is all just speculation but if um if we zoom back a little bit and we look and we and we look at the stamping 
section G right here. On the left is where the sheet metal will be stamped, in my mind, and on the right is where the frames will be stamped. Then they'll move, then they'll move um, north and perhaps be uh, uh, assembled, the sheet metal be assembled together, and the individual frame rails possibly go up on the right side and get painted. They get dipped in corrosion resistant um, a, a dip and then painted. And on the left side is where the sheet metal will flow. And I'm thinking perhaps on the right are coming, will be coming in sub, sub assemblies from vendors and it, right here at the top potentially is where the fiberglass fairings will be um, made um, because of that large tank and the um, and the chillers that are out there or the uh, and then all of that potentially in in one or more lines I'm thinking at least three separate lines will flow this way and from the right will come in the um, the heating and cooling system and uh, um, the, the drive motors which I, s I don't believe will be made here but maybe I mean actually you based on Tesla's um, MO they will be made here currently the um, plaid motors are made in Fremont but um, I don't believe they're going to want to continue that but anyway my idea is things sub-assemblies will flow in from the right be installed on that frame, tires installed, and um, there'll be uh, um, bridge cranes that bring the uh, the uh, completed body and set it on the uh, on the vehicle, and then they'll come out. That'll be the end of the end of line. They'll come out and charge here at the mega charger, like I mentioned before. Not probably not anywhere over fifty percent, and then. I believe what they're. How are they going to deliver them? So the short term, the shorter deliveries in in Nevada and California will probably they will probably drive on their own power. Um, the longer deliveries, for one, to avoid putting miles on them, and for two, because the 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 mega charger network is not in place, but it is being put in place. They will actually be um, hooked up. To a to a diesel, a Tesla a semi that di, a, a diesel semi that Tesla owns for delivery to the to the Midwest and East Coast of uh, of the country, and up to Canada where we know Walmart Canada has purchased a lot. Anyways, that's my speculation. Take a beautiful look around at Northern Nevada. It has uh, it's a it's a beautiful crisp cold day, and um, Look forward to all of your input on what you think might happen with the um, assembly line. And it um, would be awesome if Dan Priestley could um, settle the uh, question about whether or not the, um, the classic assembly line technique or the box te technique will be used. Thank you for joining.